haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all the latest content. And if you want more help from me, then visit the description below. Number of ways we can help you with your business. Uh, we can, well, you can book a free 15 to 20 minute call with me. Just visit the description below. There's a link where you can where we can jump on Zoom. I can ask you some questions, see where you're currently at, see where you want to get to, and show you some actionable steps to take this week to grow and scale your football coaching business. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can send me questions to either my email or my WhatsApp number. Again, visit the description below. Also, last thing I want to say as well on this is subscribe to my newsletter. Right, I post, well, I send out a, an email two to three times per week with strategies, tips, advice for coaches in the football coaching industry that want to grow and scale their own business, right? So again, everything that I just talked about is in the description below. So go and visit that. Right, today I want to talk about organizing a successful big football camp with 50 to 100 plus footballers. So if you are a coach that is currently running football camps, right? So we get a lot of US coaches U.S. coaches that are in soccer, you know what I'm talking about, about football camp, right? So football, soccer camp, right? So if you are currently running them and you've got 50 to 100 players on these camps and you want to make them better, then I've created a six-step guide that will help you to make your camps a lot more organized, a lot better, and add more value to your camp, right? Now, across the UK, especially during the, the school holidays and in summer, there are thousands of camps up and down the country, right? In England, in Wales, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland, there are, there are a ton of camps happening every week, right? Now, I've been in this industry for a, for, for a long time. And something I see is that most of the camps out there all look the same, right? There's no real end goal with what the camp is achieving. Uh, most of the coaches just use it as kind of a babysitting service. But what I want you to do is I want you to separate yourself from everyone else okay and become different in how you run and operate your football camps so want to go through this in front step by step right so make sure you have your notepad take some notes and again if there's anything at the end of this video that you want more help with then reach out to me this is something i do every single day I help coaches with their football coaching business to run camps, run clinics, run one-to-one -one sessions, run small group sessions, okay? And this is something I'm very passionate about, okay? So reach out to me. Don't be, don't, don't stay stuck with your business. I can find, we, we, we can definitely help you, right? So the first one is what is your end goal with your football camp? Now, again, touching back on my previous point, and I know I'm repeating myself, but what is the aim of your camp? What's your camp trying to achieve? So I made some notes below. Is it trying to achieve skill development with your footballers? Is it technical training? Is it fitness? Is it just for girls? Is it just for boys? Is it a mixed camp, right? Now, being very specific with what your camp achieves is going to not only differentiate yourself from everyone else, but your footballers are going to be achieving something that they wouldn't be achieving when, if they had attended another camp, right? So being specific is going to help with the marketing, the promoting of essentially your camp, right? So what are you looking to achieve? What's the end goal? What's the age groups that are allowed to attend, 
if you're just opening yourself up to everyone, then you're just being like everyone else. Is it just for a specific age group? Is it older players? Is it beginners? Is it intermediate players? Is it elite players? So what is your football camp? What is your end goal? What is the players that you want at the camp? Okay, Because if you determine all of this, this is going to help you in the next five steps I'm going to share with you now. Right. So what is the end goal of your camp? What do you want your players to achieve once they've stepped away from the pitch? And this is also going to determine whether they want to come back or not in the future. Right. The second one is secure a suitable venue. So find a suitable venue for your football camp. So it could be a local park, could be at a local school, it could be a power league, it could be a goal center, it could be a leisure center, right? It could be a church. Where is a suitable venue to be able to host your football camp, right? Whether it be indoor, whether it be outdoor, Right. Where is a suitable venue that ticks all the boxes for your camp? Right. And this goes down to, again, my first point. What is your end goal with the camp? If your end goal is this, then your venue needs to make sure that it's suitable for that. If it's skill development, then you've got to make sure that your, your playing facility or your playing field or your playing pitch your playing surface is, is, is good enough for your players to be able to uh, provide or, or, or do the skills that you want your players to, to do, okay? So what you're looking to achieve in your camp is going to determine whether the, the, the venue you're using is suitable for that, okay? If it's a futsal camp, for example, or you're combining you know, normal football with futsal skills, then obviously you need to make sure that you have a futsal facility, okay? So again, reach out to me. I can help you with, with this. Third one is assemble a competent coaching team. Now, when I ran camps, what I used to do, and I've made note of it at the bottom, is I made sure that every coach that was attending the entire week they signed an agreement that they were going to be attending the entire week. That not only just protected the business, protected me, but also it made sure that the coach that was going to do the camp was committed to, for the entire week. Most companies out there don't do this, but I think it's really important that coaches do sign something that holds them liable if they don't attend. Okay. Okay. Now, there's a number of ways that you can keep coaches liable for this. But again, I don't want to share too much on this. Reach out to me. We can we can discuss this further. But making sure that your coaches are signing agreements that they agree to, to the hours that you guys have, have agreed to is really important and have that in writing. So not only they have the agreement form, but you have a copy as well. Okay. I've worked with a coach once that he was running a camp with 75 uh, footballers. He had 75 players at the camp, three coaches for the entire week. Right? It got to Wednesday and he was down to one coach. Right, So obviously he then had to help out with the coaching, but they had 75 players to two coaches. He made it work, but that was because he had a plan B in place in case those coaches didn't attend but he didn't have an agreement form signed with them All right so there was no real commitment for, from them to attend so again that is one of the reasons why we need to have coaching agreements in place to make sure that uh, all your coaches agree to the days the times and the hours uh, for for your camp Fourth one is develop a camp syllabus, right? And this is something I don't see enough of. A day-to-day -day guide for your coaches to follow. What are we doing on Monday? What are we doing on Tuesday? What are we doing on Wednesday? What are we doing on Thursday? And what are we doing on Friday? Okay. This needs to be something that your coaches have that they can just show up and do, right? 
how your day is structured, what games you want them to play with, with the players, what drills, what activities, what sessions that you want them to run. Everything needs to be given to your coaches to make sure that your camp runs successfully. Right. And it is a lot of work. But if you want to run the best camps in your city, in your local area, these are the, the little details that you need to have in place in order to make this work. Right. Your coaches need to make sure that they show up, but they they need to be able to have everything laid out on the table for them. Right. They know what time they're arriving. They know what sessions that they're going to be doing during the day. They know the theme of the day. They know what time is lunch. They know what time is snack. All of this needs to be in a guide. Okay. And this is something you can provide to them before the camp starts. But the fifth one, ensure safety and medical support. Right. So I made a couple of notes below. So make sure your, your due diligence is, is done. So DBS checks which is, again, criminal record checks. Uh, your coaches are able to work with kids and able to work in your business. Uh, playing area, making sure that the surface that you're going to be using, the area doesn't have potholes, it doesn't have broken glass, it doesn't have needles. It does, it's just a safe environment for your players to be able to perform and train on. By right? Making sure that there's toilets, making sure that you've got business insurance to run the camp and making sure that parents are signing waiver forms that they agree to your terms and conditions. Same way that we have coaches agree to the hours and days of the camp, your parents need to make sure that they're signing a waiver form that they agree that they take responsibility for any injuries or anything that happens on the camp is their responsibility. OK, now, again, if you need help with any of these things, reach out to me. I can definitely help you uh, with this. So. That is the fifth one. Now, the sixth one is providing quality coaching equipment. This kind of goes without saying, if you're going to be running a camp with 50 to 100 plus players, making sure that all the coaches have the proper equipment, making sure that they have all the equipment that they need in order to run your camp syllabus. Okay, there's no point you providing coaches with a curriculum for the week and you're not providing them with the proper equipment to be able to do to run those type of sessions. Right? Your syllabus has to go in line with your equipment. And that is something that's really important. And players notice that. Right. If we're going to be working on this this type of a session, then we need to make sure that we have the equipment to be able to do that. All right. So if you need more help, right, I've been helping coaches for a very long time to run big football camps. And again, if you're in if you're in baseball, if you're in basketball, if you're in another sport, these six things that I've shared with you today can be relevant if you're looking to run any big camps in your sport. Okay. So you need more help description below and if you want to reach out to me uh, send me a text message to my whatsapp number okay thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all our latest content